everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pews and Brews, where we have a couple beers and talk about some gun gear. I'm not so tactical, Tim, and today we're going to be looking at what is quickly becoming about one of the world's most expensive Canic TP9 SFXs. But, you know, if you have guns, you add stuff to them, eh, everybody does it. So we're going to look at a couple of the features that I've added to my Canic since I originally did the review because I'm going to be using this gun for Steel Challenge. Steel Challenge is a timed, you know, rapid fire. You're trying to hit plates in succession. And the standard Canic, although it's very nice, has a real good trigger, handles really well, could be optimized to make it much better for that sort of a shooting game. So we're going to look at a couple of things that I've done to it, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to add today. One of the things that I added to it, as you can see here, is an optic. Now the first thing we're going to do, empty magazine well, empty chamber, so we know we're clear. This optic is a hollow sun. I got this from Palmetto State just a couple weeks ago. This is the 407 version. They have a 507 version as well, but this is the 407 version for $179 bucks with free shipping. So really, for under 200 bucks, it's a fantastic optic. One of the first things you'll notice is on the top here, there are solar panels on it. What that does is the solar panels operate the red dot when you're out in bright light conditions. The battery is only used if you're in really dark or black conditions. You know, say you have it in as a nightstand gun and you, know, you need to, to grab it in the middle of the night when it's dark in the house the battery takes over for the solar panels. The other really nice thing about this is it has what they call the shake awake feature. In other words, once you have it set, if you let it sit for 10 minutes, it will turn off. Because of having that feature, even if you put it in a dark case and close the case up, these batteries are said to last upwards of 50,000 hours. Yes, not 5,000, 50,000 hours on the battery. The battery compartment is on the side here, so you can get to and change the battery without having to remove the optic, which is also really nice. And it also has an auto dimming feature, which you can turn on or off, that will automatically adjust the brightness of the dot depending on the ambient light. So if you're in a really dark room, you don't want to grab it and have your last setting have been the brightest setting because you were outside in a really bright environment and now that red dot is just almost blinding you. So it'll automatically adjust for the ambient light. So if it's very in a very dark room, it'll make the dot dim. If you're outside where it's really bright, it'll make the dot brighter. That's a function that you can turn off and on. Um, just really simple up and down brightness settings for it. Now this is an eight MOA red dot, which they say, especially for target shooting, plate shooting, you should have minimum of a six MOA um, eight seems to be what a lot of guys are using. Yeah, it seems like a really big dot, but at arm's length on a pistol, it allows you to really see it quickly. You can pick it up, get on target, and get your shots on. So that's one of the things that I've recently added. The other thing that I added is this Freedom Smith trigger. This trigger is really, really nice. It's all aluminum, unlike the plastic canic trigger. Not that the original trigger is bad. But if you'll notice, when I pull it, that's it. That's the take up till you hit the wall. And that's all there is to fire it. Very crisp, clean break. And that was just installing the trigger, not changing any of the parts inside. I'm not gonna get into the installation of the trigger because stuff like that, you need to read their instructions and follow their instructions on how to do it. I don't want to get into the liability of showing how to replace a trigger and have somebody mess it up and have something bad happen. So just letting you know that these Freedom Smith triggers are about 75 bucks. Great, great upgrade as far as your trigger goes on the Canik. Now, as far as what we're going to do today is we're going to install a bunch of these Taylor Freelance heavyweight kit parts. What that's going to do is add some weight to this gun. I know it seems counterintuitive. A lot of people buy the polymer frame guns because they are lighter weight, but in a target shooting environment, 
having a very lightweight gun is actually a little bit of a detriment because without having a whole lot of mass behind it, it's very easy just to let that wobble a little bit. And just a little bit of wobble can really make a difference on whether you, you know you catch the edge of a plate or you completely miss it. So by adding some weight to this, specifically in the back of the gun, it's gonna counteract the weight that you have on the muzzle of the gun because these with the long barrel on it tend to be tend to be a little bit nose heavy. So by adding some weight to the back area of the gun, it's really gonna balance it out. Plus that added weight is gonna help absorb some of the recoil to get your second shot back on target and get that shot down range quicker. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the pieces that I got and the installation of it, and then we'll uh, get out to the range and run a couple rounds through it and see how it does. Stick around. Here we have everything laid out that we're gonna install on this Canik. Now, the first thing everybody's going to notice is all the pieces are gold. The reason for that is these are not aluminum. This isn't anodized gold because I wanted to add a bunch of bling to the gun. These pieces are actually machined out of solid brass. That's what's going to give us the weight that we want with this heavyweight kit. They do make a version of the brass pieces that's already Cerakoted to match the gray of the slide of the Canik. But with being magazine bases, your mag well, which is on the bottom of the gun, and your back strap, which is going to have your hand on it all the time, I just figure, you know, that, that stuff's probably going to wear and chip just over the course of use because of what parts they are. So I opted just to stick with the natural brass. They will patina over time and get darker, so they're not always going to be so bright gold. But for right now, that's what we have. If you saw my Molly resin video, I do have this the stuff to coat these if I want to change the color later on <clears throat> and they do offer them in aluminum in a few different colors now if you go on to Taylor Freelance's site to order these if you're looking at the brass heavyweight kit you might want to be sitting down first because they are expensive shipped to my door they were it was almost $250 for this kit it was like $244 and change but Unfortunately, if you want high quality parts, sometimes you're just going to have to pay the high quality price for it. Now, this does come with three of the extensions, and they are four round extensions. The Canik only comes with two magazines. I plan on getting another one, obviously, to put the other extension on. But because the original ones are already plus twos, I'm not going to worry about changing the magazine spring. Uh, they, there are heavyweight springs available out there. But after having installed it on this one, the spring tension seems perfectly fine yet. It's, it's not weak at all. So I think we're going to be fine with the original spring. In order to install one of these bases, real simple if you've never taken the base plate off a Canik. On the back here, there's a little slot there, this piece of spring steel. You can just get your fingernail underneath it even and pull down on it. Once you pull it down, just start sliding your base, base plate forward. Now, when you start getting it off, you want to have your finger over the top, keep that spring under control, and just lift it off. This spring steel piece is going to have to be removed. All you got to do is just follow it around the spring until you get to the end, and it'll pop right off, just like that. You don't have to pry anything or, or do anything crazy with that. To install these, the first note that I'm going to make is they do have a allen head set screw and they suggest that this only be finger tight so i just have a the appropriate sized allen head bit and that's all i'm going to use to tighten this down i've already added some loctite to this you definitely want to loctite these because that's the only thing holding this on now your spring is down in there so even if this would loosen up it's not like it's going to go flying off but it could so you want to make sure to loctite that screw and back it out so that it's below the level of this here. Reason being, as I found out with the first one, this Allen head was sticking out a little bit, and when you go to slide it on, it catches on the spring and makes it a real pain in the butt to get on. So if you just back that down below that hole, you'll be good to go. Just take your spring, push it down in, get your cap on there, 
it should, when it's pressed all the way down, line up with the notches sticking out of the magazine, and that's it. Now we just take our little Allen bit, and this is already really stiff because the Loctite's started to dry already. And just snug it down by hand like they suggest, and you're ready to go. The mags will also still fit in the stock slots that came with the Canon case, even with those extensions on. So like you can see, they're not dramatically longer than the original ones, so I think those stock springs are going to be just fine in there. Now we're going to move on to the back strap and the mag well. Here we have the back strap and the mag well that we're going to install. This is actually very simple, but there is a couple things I want to note. Uh, because it does get a little confusing when you're when you first get it if you don't really look at it and understand how it works because they don't explain it in the instructions at all. Now the first thing you'll notice is I removed the slide. No need to have it on. We, we're just working with the lower anyway. And I've already removed my original pin. Keep a hold of that because you will need that. The first thing is just the magwell comes with these two small pieces here. What those are for is if you're just going to mount the mag well without their back strap. Apparently, Canik changed the size of this hole, this little lanyard loop in the back. So just depending on what size hole you have, you'll need the appropriate one of these, which fits down in there and allows you to mount the mag well with the original Canik back strap. Now, obviously, we're gonna we have their back straps, and we're not going to need those. We'll set those aside, but. You know, definitely keep track of them in case you decide you want to just use the magwell without their back strap. So we're just going to remove our original. The new one goes on exactly like the original does. Now here's where it gets a little confusing. Inside here there's an Allen set screw. And when I originally got it, it was backed out, you know, about... An eighth of an inch maybe a little more just like it is on these other small pieces that you get if you're using the original back strap when i looked at the mag well the hole in the back i'm thinking well that set screw is way bigger than that hole there's no way it's i'm going to be able to run everything through from from back side of the back side of that hole and lock everything together i wonder if they didn't machine that all the way through the thing is, that's not how this works. What you need to do, take the Allen wrench they provide. Now they already have some red Loctite on here. I've, it's not real obvious because I've run this screw in and out a couple of times. I'll, I'll put some more blue on it then. What you have to do is turn that set screw all the way in until it's flush with or a little below the back strap there. If you see, Canics have a little bit of a flare on here. And on the inside of the mag well, the hole is larger. So what you're going to do is hook that over that little flare, put it over top. All this hole <clears throat> is for is to be able to put the Allen wrench through it. Put your Allen wrench through. And then you want to back the set screw out till it seats in the recess in the back there. And once you feel that seat, now this is just brass, so I wouldn't really crank on this. Just once you feel it get kind of snug, you're in. I was a little concerned of, of how well that was going to hold, how tight it was going to be. But I'll tell you what, I've really tried yanking on this and pulling on it and twisting it. And that doesn't move a bit. This thing is really milled out to follow the shape of that original grip underneath there. So that is really on there. I was I was really impressed by how how tight and how sturdy that feels. Now you can just reinstall your original pin back in there, hold your back strap and everything together, and you're ready to go. As you can see, they have some really nice machining on here, have their logo on there, of course, some really aggressive grooves machined into the back strap there. And with the magazine installed, the magazine does stick out the bottom a little bit. But with all that weight on it, these are definitely drop-free magazines now. So all in all, really impressed by it, impressed by the, the fit, the finish of it. You know, just a just a super nice 
super nice kit. So now we're going to uh, take it out to the range, put some rounds through it, and, and see how well it performs. Okay, we're going to try this out to begin with with some 147 grain uh, flat points. They're Acme Bullet Company bullets that I want to try out uh, just to get a little bit lower a little bit lower recoil yet for using this for steel challenge, so we are ready and we're going to do some some timed quick draw exercise. Okay, we're out here to do what we always do, and that's grab a brew and wrap up this review. First things first, we always want to check the firearm. No magazine, chamber is empty, so we know the firearm is clear. Now, as far as the three upgrades that I did on this, did it really change anything? Did it really take it to the next level as far as a competition gun goes? Absolutely, no doubt in my mind. I mean, obviously, if you're not going to shoot in an optics class or an optic isn't a big deal to you, the hollow sun isn't something you even need to worry about. But if you do want to put an optic on, man, for 180 bucks, this hollow sun 407 just can't be beat. It has every feature you would want. You know, hold zero, nice big 8 MOA dot on it. The solar panels on top that pretty much almost give you infinite battery life. And just the affordability of it at 180 bucks, man. It, it's I don't see how you can go wrong the Freedom Smith trigger I mean honestly you're looking at maybe an eighth inch of take up crisp break almost no over travel after the break good quick reset so for 75 bucks there again you just can't go wrong as far as the Taylor Freelance heavyweight kit goes might not be for everybody but I mean honestly because of these being a little bit front heavy to begin with I think having this extra weight in the back really added the stability and the solid feel that I was looking for, and especially with a full magazine with a brass base plate on it. I mean, when you draw this and bring it up, I mean, it is rock solid. It is steady, whereas with a real lightweight gun, you know, it's, it's easy to get extra movement that you don't want because the gun's so light. With this heavyweight kit on, it really makes it feel solid, gets you on target quickly. Now, as you saw from some of the draw training video that I was doing, you'll see I have my hands up. That's because in Steel Challenge, as with some other shooting sports, you start in what's called a surrender position, meaning your hands have to be up above your shoulders. When you hear the beep, you go down, you draw, get on target, and send your first round. That first round is really important because that's always the most movement, is from, from coming in your surrender position to your holster, bringing it up and sending the first round down range. That's the one that you really want to concentrate the most on. And that's where a lot of these improvements, I would say, come into play. Obviously your red dot allows for good acquisition. The better trigger gives you a nice crisp break. There again, reducing your movement and the heavyweight kit allows you to get up, get on target with a good, firm, solid feel and really hold that first target and get your shot off. That first shot to me is is the biggest thing. You know, you, you want to be quick with it, but you also want to make sure to get that hit because from there, everything else is just moving laterally because in Steel Challenge, the targets are almost always on virtually exactly the same plane. So there's not a lot of up and down motion. It's more side to side. So by having the heavyweight kit allows you to really keep it stable. You're not wiggling up and down and you can get your second shot off much quicker. Um, the Canik in itself is a great platform for this, but I think with these features on it, man, it just takes it to the next level. So, you know, 
with everything all together, you're still for the complete gun in it under a thousand dollars. And I don't know where else you're going to be able to find this kind of competition ready gun for under a thousand bucks. So that'll pretty much wrap it up from us here at the tavern. Till next time, get out there and do something useful with yourself, like put some upgrades on your canic, and then get out there and get pewing. Oh boy. We'll see you next time. Did you want to go pew? I know you do. Come on, let's go pew.